Greetings, everyone. Before you tune in to this week's International Gospel Hour television program, this is a best of our broadcast from a few months ago. If you've just joined our broadcast, you get to go back to the early days, but we know our study will be profitable today according to the Word of God. So stay tuned, and as always, thanks for watching. Did you know the story of Jesus who loves you? Jesus who died for you, Jesus can save you. Did you know that he's the one, son of the one God, son of the living God, Jesus can save you. Jesus all day, Jesus every day, Jesus when I go to bed, Jesus when I wake. I want to live a life so I hear him say, well done, my child, enter in. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to our studies today here from the International Gospel Hour. I'm Jeff Archie. Whether by radio, through podcast options, or here on television, we're grateful to study the Word of God with each and every one of you. And we truly appreciate you, our viewers, and your interest in knowing more about Christ. With that said, we go right into our highlight segment because I want to highlight some things that we do here at International Gospel Hour. We are blessed to offer a number of studies through our radio broadcast and also here through television, and this is one of them called Victory in Jesus. This 13-part study series, all in one booklet, we send out absolutely free. And for you viewing our broadcast today, we'd like for you to ask for this material. From the introduction to this study, we read, The good news of the gospel is that Jesus died for our sins, was buried, and was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. As Christians, we have been saved. We have demonstrated our faith in His death, burial, and resurrection by repenting of our sins, Acts 2, verse 38, being buried with Him by water baptism into His death, and being raised to walk in newness of life, Romans 6, 3, and 4. Dear friends, that is the victory that's in Jesus Christ. We're grateful to offer this material our friend Eddie Clower and his good work over in Arkansas, and then Brother Ralph Weinhold, who had written this material some years ago. We're thankful to offer this material. And again, as you see, it's in a book form, 13 studies that are very easy to continue and to study, to learn, and to know more of the victory in Christ. Again, we're grateful to Brother Eddie Clover and the Truth For Today Mission School and the good work that they offer with this. We were blessed with a number of these that we want to share with you absolutely free. So here's what we do. Through our program here, we offer this free study. All you have to do is call us toll free at 1-855-IGH-6988. Just leave your name and address and just say Victory Study. John Doe, P.O. Box 123, Anywhere USA, 12345, Victory Study. That's all you have to do. And if you would rather go to our website at internationalgospelhour.com, click on the contact tab and just leave the same information, name, address, and Victory Study in the message box. So whether by call at 1-855-IGH-6988 or through our website, we will get your information and we will send this as soon as possible. Now, we do not share your address with any call list or anything of that nature. We use it as communication with you. If there is interest in further study, we're grateful to have congregations of churches of Christ throughout the world that will be able to work with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but we encourage you to ask for that. We do not insist upon that. We want everyone to study the Word of God and to know His will for our lives. And we hope this study of the victory in Jesus will do so. Again, we'll send it right away. Let's pause and our Daniel Howell will have some more information about our work here at International Gospel Hour. Then we're going to come back with our Search the Scriptures segment. 
Did you know almost half of the global population has a smartphone? At the touch of a finger, you can access the International Gospel Hour by downloading our app absolutely free. You'll have access to our website, social media, podcast option, our YouTube channel, and other resources all by the touch of your finger in the palm of your hand. Please download our app on your smartphone device today. It's absolutely free from International Gospel Hour. And now let's search the Scriptures. We call this segment Search the Scriptures because of the words of Jesus in John 5, 39, when Jesus said, Search the Scriptures, for in them ye think you have eternal life. We are able to search the Scriptures that are given by inspiration of God, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. We can search the Scriptures and understand God's will for our lives that at one time I had not seen nor ear had heard of the things that God had promised to man. But He has revealed them unto us through His Spirit, and that is through the written word, 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10. Today, let's search the scripture of Isaiah 53, verse 3. In previous broadcasts, we've looked at the first two verses. And so today, let's look at verse number 3 that says, Concerning Christ, the prophecy of Christ, he is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. As we search this scripture today, let us see from Isaiah 53 and verse 3, the wrong of mankind. And we begin by looking at the wrong of rejection. Notice twice in this verse that mankind despises, which leads to rejection, or its definition to be vacant, ceasing or destitute, or avoided. Mankind is saying, I don't want anything to do with this Christ. I don't want anything to do. I will reject him. I, I, I despise him. I despise this opportunity. I know that sounds harsh, but the word is harsh because Isaiah the prophet is reminding us of the danger in rejecting the one who died for us. Our lives will be vacant. They will cease. There's no spiritual life there. Destitute. We want to avoid that. Oh, dear friends, let, let, let's learn of what to do by what not to do. The wrong of rejection. You know, a disciple rejected Christ, that being Judas, one of the twelve of whom Jesus had chosen. In Matthew 24 or Matthew 26, beginning with verse 14, one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him to you? And they counted out to him 30 pieces of silver. So from that time he sought opportunity to betray him. He walked with Jesus. He saw the same miracles. He saw the same work. He was right there with Jesus, but yet the Scripture prophesied there would be one that would turn from him. And Judas rejected Christ. How about the enemies that rejected Christ? Jesus is hanging upon the cross, and the very ones that he died for rejected him. Those who passed by blasphemed him, saying, and wagging their heads, you who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. You are the Son of God come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priest also mocking with the scribes and elders said, He saved others. Himself he cannot save if he is the king of Israel. Let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. How the enemies rejected Christ. Walking by, looking upon that cross and rejecting him. This may surprise you, but hear me out. How about the faithful 
that rejected Christ. And I'm going to put faithful in quotes there. Faithful as in those that should know the law of Moses. Matthew 26, verse 59, Now the chief priest and elders and all the council sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death. They sought out lies rather than to embrace the truth of the law of Moses. They rejected Christ. Faithful as in those who should know the law of Moses. God forbid, how sad. And then to seek out false witness against Jesus to put him to death, to find people who would lie against him to convert him. Well, dear friends, obviously, rejection, it's the wrong choice. Dear friends, for us to reject Jesus Christ today is the wrong choice. We see of those that rejected Him and what happened. You know, I think about those that rejected Him, that assembled on the day of Pentecost. They were pricked in their heart and they obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ that day, about 3,000 souls. Christ presented hope to those very ones that had a part in crucifying Him, and not only hope, but to convert them to follow Him. Dear friends, it's a wrong choice. For the disciple that would turn away, Peter, if anybody could write about it, it's Peter who had rejected Christ, who had denied Christ. But he came back in 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 20, and he talked about those that to be entangled again in the life they were previously living would be like the sow that was washed returning to the mire of the mud, and the dog would be returning to his own vomit of which he had just thrown up, and then the dog in turn would lap it up, returning back to his vomit, the sow to the mire. How tragic. It's a wrong choice for the disciple that would turn away. And dear friends, there are those who can and who will turn away from Christ. Galatians 5, 4 reminds us that Paul said, you are fallen from grace. If you want to go back and embrace the law of which Jesus placed on the cross, you're going to fall from grace. Hymenaeus and Alexander, 1 Timothy chapter 1 Hebrews 3 and verse 12, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Dear friends, do not turn away from the gospel. And if you're watching our broadcast and you're thinking, you know, I haven't walked as close to the Lord. I've turned from Him. I've gone back into the world. I've ceased attending worship. I haven't been involved in the work of the Lord. I'm out here for myself. Dear friends, rejection. It's sad. Don't reject the one who has redeemed you. For the world that will reject him altogether, Jesus said in John 12, 48, He that rejects me and receives not my words hath one that will judge him. The word that I have spoken, the same will judge him in the last day. Now, kind friend, can you imagine a life that would make Christ vacant? I don't want Christ in my life, and our lives are vacant. I don't want Christ, and we reject Him. A life that would cease Christ within the life. A life that would make Christ destitute. That one absolutely amazes me. He can grant us all things pertaining to life and godliness, 2 Peter 1, 3. And a life that avoids Christ, a life that would hide one's face, Rejection is wrong, simply wrong. I mean, the wrong of rejection, it's an oxymoron. I mean, the one that would reject Christ is simply wrong. And if you reject Christ, my friends, your wrong will come back to haunt you. But in this text, let's also see the wrong of resistance. Sorrows and grief was upon this one. He was acquainted with grief. He knew it. He lived with it. You know, I'm always amazed by the study of John 11:35 in the raising of Lazarus. Jesus knew that he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. He even told his apostles before the journey to the house of Mary and Martha and to the tomb of Lazarus, 
He is not dead, but he sleeps. And when he got there knowing that he could heal him, he saw the hurt of Martha. He saw the hurt of Mary, the hurt of all those around. Standing there at that tomb, John eleven thirty five, 35, which we always say the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. John eleven thirty five. 35, Jesus shed tears. He was acquainted with sorrow and grief. And you know, friends, if he knows sorrow and grief, I need his help because I'm aware of sorrow and grief. Hebrews 4, 15 says, We do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The high priest on the right hand of the Father, Hebrews 1, 1 through 3, that with my weaknesses I come boldly before the throne of grace. My high priest is there. He paid my price. He shed the blood. And when I take my weaknesses before him, before him rather, and go boldly unto his throne, go unto him with all that I have to pour out what I need, grace to help in time of need. I need my Savior. I don't have room to reject. I don't have the room to resist. Let me go before my Father through my Savior, my high priest, with my weaknesses, knowing He's there for me. And you know, sometimes we resist the very one who can help us. I recall one of my beloved aged sisters in Christ who has passed on from this life. Her name was Corrine. Oh, I loved Reginald and Corrine. They were a wonderful couple. They were so good to me in my early days of my first full-time work. But I remember she telling me about losing a loved one. If I'm not mistaken, it was her mother. And how worship attendance ceases for people. You know, I've known individuals that would attend worship faithfully and they lose a loved one and worship ceases. Why would you cease worshiping the one who knows of our griefs and sorrows, the one who will help us? Corrine told me, she said, it was so hard. She lived with her mother. She said, it was so hard when my mother passed to go to worship. She said, but I pressed on knowing that God would make it better. And he did. I can remember attending worship the Sunday after my father had passed away. But I wanted to give my very best unto my heavenly father who helped me deal with the loss of my earthly father. And he will make it better, friends. Sometimes we do resist him in our daily lives. We try to fix things ourselves. I need to take care of a few things. I need to get a few things lined out. And when I do, Lord, I'll be back. Why not let the Lord help us to fix those things? Because we got ourselves in that situation to begin with. We say we cannot, but God can and He will help us. From searching the Scriptures, we see the wrong of those that rejected Christ. But oh, for those that turn to Christ and do not reject Him... And you know, friends, from our study of the Scriptures today, from searching, we can learn the right way by observing the wrong way. We seek, and we will find God and His Word. Dear friends, if you're suffering, there is the Savior. If problems arise, there are His promises. Come closer. Don't depart further. He's there for you and I. We'll be back in a few moments now, our Daniel Howell. Our website is internationalgospelhour.com. That's internationalgospelhour.com. Please check it out and listen to our other broadcasts, learn more of our history, download our app, 
request our free newsletter and free Bible study. Also, check out our free resources available from our fellow laborers in the gospel. Yes, friends, all for you through our website at internationalgospelhour.com. Handling the Word of Truth. Let's look at this segment of Scriptures to where we handle the Word of Truth. We've searched the Scriptures, but now we want to handle or apply them. And today I want to talk once again about repentance. In Luke 13 and verse 3, Jesus said, I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. So I understand repentance is necessary. Peter in 2 Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So no doubt repentance is a command. As we've studied earlier, it is a change of decision resulting in a change of direction, a turning away and a turning toward God. When we think about repentance, and as we did in our Search the Scripture segment where we looked at what not to do so we know what to do, in this segment of handling aright the Word or handling the Word of Truth, let's take a look at repentance. We've defined it. Matthew 21, 28 through 32, great example of repentance, the turning away and turning toward God. But There are some misunderstandings about repentance, so let's see what not to do to embrace what we are to do. First of all, repentance is not simply being sorry. You know, Mark chapter 6 and verse 26, the Bible says Herod was exceeding sorry, was exceedingly sorrowful. Remember, the daughter of Herodias danced before Herod with all her might, and he promised to give her anything she wanted. And her mother said, ask for John the Baptist's head on a platter. Has to be one of the weirdest requests ever made. That woman was vicious because, you see, John said it wasn't lawful for her to be married to her husband. And so the king had no choice. He was exceedingly sorrowful, but he still beheaded John the Baptist. So repentance is simply not being sorry. Repentance is defined as a godly sorrow that moves one to repentance. The Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 7, beginning with verse 9, Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that your sorrow led to repentance. For you were made sorry in a godly manner that you might suffer loss from us in nothing. For godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. I love that verse. Paul said, I I regret that you were made sorry. I don't regret it, but that your sorrow led you to repentance. That's what I'm thankful for. Folks, there are times people say, you know, that offended me. I used to have an individual would come out and say, boy, Jeff, you just wore me out today. And it was made in a complimentary way. And one Sunday he said, man, you wore me out. I said, you know something? If you would repent, it wouldn't bother you as much. It kind of caught his attention, and I meant it tongue-in-cheek, but there's a lot of truth in that. Man, you wore me out. Well, repent and change, and you won't have to worry about it. You'll walk out rejoicing rather than being worn out. You see, repentance is not just sorry. Someone says, man, I'm sorry for what I've done. The best example I know to give, a little fellow one time sitting on the front row after Bible study, and I asked him what was going on, and he said, I'm in time out. Oh, I knew he did something wrong. I said, did you do wrong? He said, yes, sir. I said, are you sorry? He said, yes, sir. I said, are you willing to repent? And he looked at me kind of funny. He didn't know what that meant. He was only four or five years old. You see, he was sorry, but with a sorrow caused us to change. That's true repentance. Secondly, repentance is not regret. You know, the immoral person may regret what he has done because he got caught. He's been exposed. Would he have responded otherwise? Now, if the regret drives him on to a godly sorrow and then repents, now you have it. 
Actually, biblical repentance eliminates the regret. Back to 2 Corinthians 7 and verse 10. You know, sometimes a person will say, well, I will take full responsibility for what I've done. Well, surprise, surprise, who else is going to do it? You're the one that did wrong. I'm the one that did wrong. Repentance is not coming forward at the church assembly and asking for prayers, but not ceasing the behavior. Have a beloved cousin that put it this way, we report, but we don't repent. You know, it's kind of like Pharaoh and King Saul that said, I have sinned, probably said that more than anybody, but they never repented. So repentance is not coming and asking for prayers and not ceasing the behavior. We ask for prayers for strength to help us overcome that. And fourth, repentance is not merely a reformation of life. John the Baptist clearly declared, Matthew 3, 8, stands true today, bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. Now a person may cease doing something because of their health, but there may be no repentance. The alcoholic that will stop drinking because the doctor has said, unless you stop, you're going to die. He may cease doing it because of health, but will he repent of being a drunkard and the effect that he has had on others. Dear friends, our broadcast today has kind of looked at, some would say, a negative approach. But I submit to you that sometimes we can look at the evil so we can avoid it to do the good. And that's where I'm thankful that repentance is a sweet word. It's a word that shows a change, a turning And how blessed we are knowing there is something better ahead for the one that will repent. Great study today, and I hope that we will take repentance and handle that in our lives as it is from the Word of Truth. Our Daniel Howell is going to share with you our great Bible study by mail. Be ready to write down the information, and here's our Daniel Howell. The International Gospel Hour offers a free Bible study course by mail. Study at home and at your pace. Please call toll-free at 1-855-IGH-6988 and leave your name, address, and just say, Home Study. You may also go to our website at internationalgospelhour.com, click on the Contact tab, and again, leave your name, address, and type, Home Study. We'll send it right away. Praise be to God that the wrong of mankind can change through God's plan of salvation, man's faith, repentance, confession, and baptism, resulting in a new faithful walk for our Lord. So we're going to keep searching the Scriptures together, friends. We're going to handle aright the Word of Truth. We're going to highlight good things going on. And we're going to do that next week as we did this week. Thanks for joining me today on the International Gospel Hour television broadcast. And until next time, friends, keep watching. God, Son of the living God, Jesus can save you. Jesus all day, Jesus every day. Jesus when I go to bed, Jesus when I wake. I want to live a life so I hear Him say, Well done, my child. Entering.